tail wag i've gotten a lot of questions about it a lot of people like it a lot of people hate it <laughs> it's just something that i was messing around on the sim one day i believe it was back in 2007 that's when everybody started doing the crack maneuvers with the cyclic you know where you jiggle the cyclic and the helicopter looks like it's on crack and i remember thinking what can i do that's not like that but it's sort of similar so I started trying to do it with the rudder, and over time it has just kind of progressed into what it is now. You know, you're just moving the rudder back and forth at whatever speed you desire, and you can do it pretty much in any maneuver. Hurricanes, loops, you can do it with flips. So the possibilities are basically endless with it. That's something that I always try to incorporate into my flying is a, a different element, something that's different. The high-speed porpoise maneuver, it's fairly simple. The helicopter's flying at high, high speed. You just toggle the elevator and it porpoises. I think it looks really cool. How I just came about this maneuver was uh, flying on the simulator, just uh, messing around, and I matched some music to it and uh, it seemed to work out well. The Piro Wobble is a maneuver that a lot of people have asked me about. You know, how did you come up with it? I really was, uh, I was messing around on the sim one day and I was trying uh, reverse Piro Flips and I couldn't do them. I kept messing up. The helicopter was doing this funky wobble thing. I was like, well, maybe you could uh, make that into an actual maneuver. So I started trying it. It got better and just progressed into a maneuver. And then I tried to put some music to it and add some elements to it. As far as pumping the collective, it's a maneuver that I, I really like. I think it's uh, fun to do and looks kind of cool. As far as how long it takes to learn the maneuver, if you, if you have good control on pyro flips and a good understanding of what it takes to control the model while pirouetting, then it's really not something that's too hard to do. You know, it's just sitting there stationary, stirring the sticks so that the model doesn't completely roll over or doesn't completely flip over it just kind of goes back and forth it's kind of an illusion type thing One of the advantages, specifically with the V-Bar and the Logo 600, that you couldn't necessarily do on other models, maneuvers like the Piro Wobble, something that is very, very violent. You start uh, introducing the collective pump into the Piro Wobble. You got so many, so many moving parts, it just looks crazy. And the Logo 600 doesn't have a problem with it. It just takes it, takes it, takes it. Whereas on other machines, you might have a boom strike or something of that nature. Another maneuver where the, I think the V-Bar and the Logo 600 specifically stand out is the high-speed porpoises. The model is moving at a, you know, fast pace and anytime it's moving at a fast pace you have risk for whenever you give big cyclic inputs, blades flexing, tail boom flexing, you have the risk for a boom strike. But I've never had a problem with the Logo and uh, it's just been great for the new maneuvers. This maneuver, we didn't really have a name for it, so we came up with mirrors. It was something that I did at 3D Masters for my freestyle routine, and also I believe I did it at XFC. It's, again, it's fairly simple like most of the maneuvers. Uh, it's just something where the helicopter is, you do a half aileron roll to one side, and then you give a 180 degree pirouette and you roll to the other side and you just go back and forth. 
Again, it's not something that's too hard to do. It's just, uh, I think it looks cool and adds a different element to the flying. The rolling loop is not something new. It's not something that I invented necessarily. It's been around for a long time, but um, I haven't really seen anybody do it nose in. I always try to find new ways to do stuff, uh, new ways to interpret maneuvers and um, incorporate them into the flying routines. So I tried to do a nose in loop and it, a lot of people say it looks hard, but in reality, I think the nose in loop is easier than doing a loop where you're looking at the side of the helicopter because in a nose in loop, the helicopter is always either tail into you or nose into you. So I think it's a lot easier as far as controlling the um, rudder inputs and the fore aft inputs to get it through the loop. This maneuver, it's uh, flips with tail wag while changing the orientation of the flip. So basically, all you do is you're doing a backflip with tail wag, and then at whatever point you want, you reverse the direction of the flip from forwards to backwards. Uh, again, it's fairly simple, and it's just something that I thought looked different and thought looked kind of cool, so I you know, wanted to incorporate it into some routines, and I think it's worked out pretty well. Speaking of tail wag maneuvers, I think one of the more popular ones is the maneuver where you do TikToks with the tail wag. You can do this either stationary, forwards, or backwards. Most of the time I do, I do it backwards, I don't know. One time a guy told me, he said, Jamie, can you do the tomahawk? And I said, you know, what's the tomahawk? He said, you know, the maneuver where you're doing the TikToks with the tail wag. I said, oh, well, I mean, I guess, I guess that kind of fits because the tail's kind of chopping backwards like a tomahawk. So I guess that's just how that maneuver got that name. Lots of people know my dad, Jim. Him and my mom have always been really supportive of anything I want to do, whether inside the hobby or outside the hobby. And you know, he helps me in any way he can and is always supportive. And it's been great being able to travel to events with him. We've had a good time. I'm often asked if I come up with maneuvers according to what music I listen to. I really, I do it the opposite of that. I try to come up with the man maneuver first and then add the music to it. Cause I just, I mean, I think it's a lot easier because if you already have a maneuver, then you have that set in your mind, you know, okay, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. So then you can just go searching for music that matches it. And sometimes you do have to make little adjustments to the maneuver to make it match the music how you want. To.